from our last meeting, you should have picked or worked through this in your in your student guide, right? From parent functions and transformations, this is page two of your student journal. So what I want you to do right now is compare what you came up with for the, each of these graphs. You're supposed to classify them as linear absolute value, uh, parabola square root, cubic, reciprocal, or exponential, and explain why you picked that. Go ahead and do that right now. Share with your neighbors. Okay, here we go. Letter A, what did we get? Absolute value. Absolute value, okay. So I'm going to abbreviate abs. Okay, how about B? Square root. Okay, how about C? Constant linear. Constant. Okay. Uh, it is linear. Okay. Uh, how about D? Exponential. Exponential. How about E? Cubic. How about that? Linear. Linear. All right. All right. And then we had another page, page three there. On page three, how about G? Yeah, that's reciprocal. Now, we also call reciprocal a rational. Rational. Okay. It's a reciprocal function. And how about H? Quadratic. Quadratic. All right. Did I show you guys my pen? I'm really impressed with it, and it writes really well. I really like it, yes. Okay. I'm just saying. This is like the third time? Okay. Well, on Monday, it'll be the fourth time. All right. How do you guys know that? I mean, it says justify your reasoning. Like, how do you know? This is like came to you in a vision. You're like, whoa. All right. Okay. Yeah. How many of you had experiences with these pictures before? You're like, okay, I know this picture is absolute value because I did it in algebra. Or at some point. I know this one is linear because I did it in algebra. I know this one's cubic because I saw it at one point. Around yeah. algebra. I know this one's constant because I see it a lot in math and science. I know this one is quadratic because I saw it a lot and I got sick of seeing it. Okay? How did you know the other ones? Process of elimination? Josh? Oh, I, I told you that one. I gave away that one. Okay, my bad. Yes? Either. So it looks kind of like a fraction. There's a top and a bottom. Okay. Good. All right. Emma. Nice. Good. There you go. So looked it up online, tried some equations, and that's kind of what it looked like. All right. Good. All right. Those are all good ways. Let me kind of explain how our, our book goes, just so you understand. Okay, this title, this says Parent Functions and Transformations. All right? We, in Chapter 1, we kind of do a broad overview of linear really quick and of all the stuff we're going to do to all of our functions. Okay? Throughout the year, you're going to study linear, quadratic, absolute value, square root, um, uh, polynomial, which is where cubic will fall, uh, exponential, logarithmic, uh, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Um, I know I'm missing something in there. You, you're going to study all those fam They're all called a family of functions. So what happens is as the year progresses and we switch chapters, each chapter X starts moving around. That's how these change. Like we know absolute value of X is Y equals absolute value of X. X is in the absolute value sign. Square root, Y equals square root x. x is in the square root symbol. Constant, y equals some kind of number. So there's no x. It's like disappeared. It's a ghost. Okay, here. Uh, exponential, y equals um, x to a power other than 2. Okay, like maybe the fifth power. Okay. Um, uh, linear, y equals mx plus b. Cubic, what? Oh, hold on. My bad. Exponential. That was y equals 
Yeah, like three to the power of x. Thank you. You gotta check me. You gotta correct me soon, Chase. It's okay to just say you're wrong, McCoy. You messed up right there. Okay. Yeah, power's up there. So cubic, I caught that when I went to here because you're now at y equals x to the third. And really, when we're dealing with polynomials, I mean, a polynomial function, you may have x to the fifth, x to the sixth. We just have x cubed there. Okay. Reciprocal y equals 1 over x. x moves to the denominator. Quadratic, we're at x squared. So it's polynomial. It's just one that we study a lot of. Okay, so, and then we haven't went through all the others yet. You don't have to memorize all these. It's just that x becomes kind of like that annoying friend that, like, we'll like away. well, yeah, or, or it hides around corners and scares you because you never know where it's going to show up. Okay? You're like, the next chapter, you're like, oh, there it is, up here in the power. Oh, there it is. It's in the MX plus B. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's all in different spots. All right. With that being said, turn your page, page four. Trying to get to know our student journal real, uh, real briefly. You have those explorations. We did that one. We now have every, in your student journal, there's always a note page. A place for you to take notes, whether it be um, definition. Sometimes there's, hey, quiet, please. Gentlemen, right here. Okay. Whether it be definitions, uh, be a lot of them or a short amount of them. Okay. In this one, there's quite a few, and we're not going to actually go through each of these individually, but if you want to, as you're preparing for tests or quizzes, you want to go through and review your vocab, it's a great way to do it. And I'll show you where to find that in the book. But it also has these core concepts. Now, those of you who heard of Common Core, okay, that's where the core concepts come from. They're like Common Core standards. That's why they have the cute name Core Concepts. Okay, um, and it just talks about some of the stuff we've already discussed there. But if you want to take notes in here, it's fine to do that. That's really why I say tear it. I would tear out Chapter One at some point because you you grabbed a note page on the way in, and almost. Not every day, but a lot of days you're going to grab a note page, which means we're going to do notes other than what's in your journal. And I don't want you stressing out. Like if you're a type A person, you're like, oh my gosh, hold on. I have like 1.1 notes here, and then I have 1.1 notes here, and then I have these assignments, and they're all in different spots, and that stresses me out. Okay, well, that's if you tear out the journal stuff, then you can like put them all in a nice orderly fashion in a binder. There's no stress involved. Now, if you're like, dude, who in the world does that? Then you don't, and you probably won't be stressed out. So you may not have to tear out that part. If it were me, I would stress out. Okay. Why? Because I'm more type A like that. Sorry, that's just how I am. All right. We're done with that page. Let's move on. All right. You all grab the blue sheet on the way in. It says, miss the lesson checklist. This is not an assignment right now. This is for you to put in the front of your binder. When might you miss a lesson? Yes. Sick. Yeah, if you're sick. If you're absent for any reason. Sorry, Riley, was that what you were going to say? Good. For our orthodontist. Any of those things, okay? You miss a lesson. How could you go about getting the material that we covered that day, and how could you get the assignment? That's not a question. I'm going to actually talk about it. Yes? Oh, dude, you're answering the question too. Man, you're going to tell me too. Kai, you're going to tell me too, right? No? You had a question? That guy. No, the guy that had his hand up. Maggie, can I? I'm going to explain that. You know. You're very, that's very good. Hey, you guys should always know what lesson we're on based upon our planner, okay, that I send out. Um, you could always ask a friend as well. But when you miss a lesson, this part up here is something I've added specific to Big Ideas textbook. So those of you who had me last year, this is specific to this textbook, okay? As is this right here. Okay, that's the definitions in the student journal extra practice. Okay, which would have been the next page of your student journal after the definitions there. You can see an extra practice page. Okay, 
This right here is what I've done always in my class. You could always, like, we're recording this lesson right now. So if you were gone today, which you're not because you're here, but if you were gone, you could actually just go to this website and watch exactly what we're doing right now. It's not live. You'd have to wait till I post it, which I do at the end of the school day. Okay, but you could actually go there and just watch this. Do you have to do this up here? I'm never checking this. This is for your benefit. If it helps you, great, do that. If you're like, McCoy annoys me, I cannot follow along, I need to do this, that's fine, then do that. I hope that's not me. Hopefully you say something like, you annoy me, Can I, in a nice way. All right? Um, and you could do these. If it just helps for you to follow along with what we're doing in class, on the video lesson, pausing and stuff, just do that. That's fine. Go through, go to the website, click on today's in-class video lesson, you're good. Okay? But you must at least somehow get the lesson material and you must get the assignment in some way. How can you get the assignment? Well, you could, if you turn this over, yours over, you could print the assignment at home. I attach all of your assignments. If they're worksheets, I attach them online. How do you do that? Well, you have to log into Skyward. You go to your grade book. You click on your grade for this class. This person had a good grade. You click on that grade. That will pull up all your assignments. You click on the desired assignment. Usually it'll be the last assignment. I just picked a random assignment. So click on that assignment with the little paper clip. There's a paper clip there. Okay. When that when you click on it, it opens this up. You click on the paper clip and it'll pop up a PDF of the assignment. And right under it, it tells you what we have to do. So sometimes, I've had various students make it to various parts of this. They're like, hey McCoy, I got the assignment, what do we have to do? It's like listed right under where you click. It tells you what you're doing. Or the reason I have you do this, because when, you, when you're gone, I like that you're responsible and you email and you're like, McCoy, I was gone today, what did we do? Okay, if every student that misses a day does that, that's too many emails for me to reply to. This is how you get that info. It's not that I don't appreciate you being proactive. It's just I'm not going to always be able to reply to those. Okay, I want you to be able to figure out how to do that. Here's how you do it. I will commit to having all of our assignments attached. Okay, if you're like, my printer doesn't work, I don't have internet, I can't do that, then you go to the extra copies bin. And Aaron, where's the extra copies bin? Yeah, how'd you know? Yeah, it's like extra copies right there. Okay, So it's on the counter in here, right? You go to the extra copies bin and you grab the assignment. It is usually the back assignment. You don't have to like take all the papers out and fling them all over and go, oh, it's right here, and then shove them all back in like you do your backpack. Just pick the black assi back assignment and say, are there any special instructions here, McCoy? And I go, yeah, you have to do this. Okay? Good? Any questions? Okay, explain to your neighbor exactly what I just said on how, what you do if you miss a lesson. You go online and get on Skyward. So, I think it was my daughter. Okay. So, one of your assignments, you'll have two assignments today. One I'll give you towards the end of class. The other assignment is to go online to Skyward and print the assignment today that says print me. Like the actual assignment title when you open when you like look down the assignments it'll say 1.1 print me. Now it usually won't be that clear it'll actually have a title but this one I'm trying to make clear this is what I want you to print. print me. And then make sure you read this because I'm going to tell you to do some goofy stuff and the details. So read the details. Be my, it might be like, hey, draw butterflies and roses all over your paper. Okay? Or stick out your tongue at your paper. But I couldn't see that, so that wouldn't make sense. Um, I don't know. Put a big star in the middle of your paper. Yes? No, it'll be one thing. I'm not writing a, a journal for you. I just want to know that you're referencing that. Okay? So that's one of your assignments. If you don't have internet at home, you'll have to pick it up for on Monday morning from me in the classroom. 
Okay. Very good. Moving on. Need you to log into Big Ideas. Big Ideas math on your Chromebook. So go to your Chromebook there. Um, open up a tag. Type in clever dot lk or clever dot com backslash in backslash lk steals right there. Okay, or you can just go to the bookmark thing. But if you're at home, you have to type. It. All right, or you go to my website and hit select. It's on my web page. Okay, and that should bring you to your login page, which I've got open right there. Once you're in there, if you click on the Big Ideas Math icon, that's going to bring you to your home page. Now, my home page looks a little different than yours. You look like you have more icons because you do. You're cooler, life, cooler than me, I guess, um, and the way that they structure them. But I have mine scroll across the page, so I feel pretty neat. Uh, that can scroll like that. What is it? Uh, username is that all you can use? Your username is six digit ID. And then, w so when you're to this page, or when you get to the login, your username was your six digit ID. And then usually it was your birthday. So, like if it was May 5th. Or May 3rd, it would be 5 slash 3 slash 2001. No exclamation. Okay. How many are at this page right now? Okay, very good. While you guys are doing that, I am going to go to my, my website. Okay, and we go to teacher pages. If you want to go to my website and just watch the video lesson, you can do that. And the website is down there. Okay, you'd select advanced algebra, you'd select chapter one, and you would right here above where it says virtual nerd today, after today, it'll say in class video lesson. You'd select that link. You could watch what we're watching or doing right now. Okay. And then all the examples and monitor progresses I'm about to show you in the textbook are also listed right here. Okay? So once you're in here, I need you to select on Student Dynamic Ebook App or Ebook. Okay, it's going to bring you to a library. I have a lot of books, you have one. Okay? Select your textbook. It's going to open a page. Now, I want us to be on 1.1. 1 .1. So, the beginning of 1.1 1 .1 was on page 3. And page 3 actually showed the exploration. So, I'm going to go back to page 3 real quick. Okay. We did the exploration already. Same thing that was in your student journal. Okay, page four is where our examples start. Now, if you miss a day, remember on this sheet, this this top part. Yeah, let's switch to that here. Okay, this top part here. This is what I'm about to go through. You're going to read through example one. You're going to study the solutions. You check, or you try the extra examples next to example one, and then do the monitor progress. And then you do that for all of those examples. That's how you can use the online textbook. So if you're if you're looking at your ebook again, here's exam here's our core concepts, here's our definitions in bold highlighted that you can define, and here's example one. And notice in example one you have these different problems you can read through. It says identify identify the function family to which f belongs compare the graph of f to the graph of the parent function. If you click on tutorial, so you have to go down here and hit the arrow, if you click on tutorial, it's going to actually show you a quick video of something just like that. Okay? So you like... Is that better? 
It's not the exact same one. All right, so if you're like, I don't quite understand the example, I need someone to show it to me, that would be how you show it. And once you think, yeah, I got it, I know how to do that, okay, then you can go down and try this problem. Try that problem on your own, and then if you click the little blue triangle next to it, it actually shows that exact problem worked out. Okay. So that's kind of how this book is set up. That exact problem would be worked out under the monitor progress. So by the way, what type of graph is that? What parent function? That's quadratic. Okay, and you can watch it. Notice it's only about 24 seconds long. Okay. Once you finish example one in the monitor progress, then you can try example two. And notice there's a little problem like it there. And then not you don't always have monitor progresses after every example. So Sometimes you have to do two or three examples before you can do the next monitor progress. So go to example three, check it, and then try monitor progress for examples two and three. And you keep doing that. Some of you may go like, when do these end? Well, they end when you run out of examples. There's example four, there's example five, example six, and oh, dude, out of examples. Four. You're like, yay, we're done. Okay? Then your lesson's done. That's how you use the textbook, all right? Other than all the other stuff we showed the other day. Okay, any questions there? Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to work through some of those examples together with you, all right? So if you want, you can have your Chromebook open to the textbook app, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our note page that looks like, 